Hello folks, I'm just going to do a quick uh, how-to video on installing a MSATA uh, solid-state drive in the new Alienware 14 laptop. Um, I couldn't find a lot of information about doing it before I did it, so I thought, well, now that I've done it, I'll make a little bit of video. Maybe it'll help the next person that decides they want to try it. Um, this video is going to do installing the drive as the main OS boot drive. Um, I, you can do it as a caching drive and that, but um, the main thing that uh, that I wanted to do and that I couldn't find information about was doing it as the main OS drive. Um, I've done it and it works well. Uh, I will start by saying, uh, just a quick disclaimer, uh, I'm not an expert. Um, this is just going to be my experience, uh, what I did and what worked for me. Um, if you, you know, are going to get into and work on your computer, it's going to be at your own risk. Um, you know, anytime you go and modify electronics, you, you know, if you're not comfortable doing it, you might want to maybe leave it to somebody else. Um, so, first things first, uh, what we have here is what I used. Uh, we have the Plextor uh, M5M 256GB solid state drive. Uh, I did a little bit of research and it seemed to be pretty fast, pretty decent for the money, and I got a pretty good deal on it. Um, so that's what I went with, and uh, so far it's working great for me. Um, <clears throat> you're going to obviously want to have the computer. Uh, the only tool you'll need is a small uh, Phillips screwdriver. Uh, you'll want your Alienware uh, Windows CD. This is the Windows 7 CD that came with the computer. Uh, if you have Windows 8, um, maybe you got a Windows 8 disk. If you didn't get a Windows disk, um, you're going to need some form of operating system to put on the, on the new drive. Because um, again, uh, I'm showing how to do to set it up with a fresh, uh, fresh install of Windows and set it up as the main OS drive. <clears throat> you also want your Alienware resource CD uh, or resource DVD. Uh, this is going to have all your drivers and all the uh, software that came with the computer on it, so you can get it back to factory status. Uh, what I did to start out uh, first, uh, first thing I did was uh, before I did anything else, I put the uh, Windows CD in the CD drive and that made it a little bit quicker, eliminated some steps so that once I had the new drive in I could just boot the computer up and I was ready to install Windows um, once I set the boot order in the BIOS. So first thing to do, like I said, you put that in the drive uh, then you want to shut down the computer, power it off and physically install the drive. If you flip the computer over you'll see that there are four small screws um, in the corners and all you need to do is remove each of those screws and slide the cover off. Once you've removed all the screws the cover just slides forward and then lifts straight off. And you set that aside. <clears throat> right here is the MSATA slot. As you can see I already have my Plextor drive installed. Um, very simple to install it. Um, you're going to take the drive and it will insert at about a 45 degree angle and it you, you'll push it down into the uh, connection slot and then it will be kind of spring loaded and you'll have to press it down in place and then install the single uh, single screw that holds it in place. Um, there's no actual spot on the motherboard here to install a screw so you only use one screw. It is an M2 by 3 millimeter screw and my drive did include that. Um, I've read where others say that their drive did not include it. Uh, there's plenty of places you can order it online. You may even be able to find it at a hardware. Uh, but that's all there is to physically installing it. You just slide it into place, tip it down, put the screw in. Install is very similar to RAM. Uh, the only difference is rather than having the spring loaded clips to hold the RAM in place, there's a small screw. And that's it. Once you have the drive physically installed, you simply slide the cover back in place and put your screws back in. Once you have the cover in installed, uh, you can boot up the computer and you're going to want to get into the BIOS menu right away and change the boot order of the drives so that uh, you can boot off the CD to install the operating system but you also want to make the, uh, the new solid state drive your main boot drive. So you're going to go ahead and power on the laptop. And you're going to want to get ready to press F2. And when the uh, Alien logo comes up, you press F2. And now you're in the boot menu. 
and up at the top you have some options here um, it starts out on main you have to use the arrow keys to navigate uh, you're going to want to scroll over to boot and under legacy boot which is the option it starts out on you right there you'll hit enter and then what comes up is your boot order and uh, it won't look like this originally um, it will show a hard drive as the first one and then um, I think CD drive after that and then network um, but what you can do is you'll see down the bottom you have the optional controls uh, to change values F6 and F5 move the uh, uh, the options up and down so what you'll do is you'll choose M SATA and you use F5 and F6 to move it up and down the list so you want to put that at the top then use the arrow key to select the next drive and then use F5 and F6 to move that up and down the list and what you want to do is you want to get the order the way I have it set right now uh, you want M SATA at the top so that that's going to be the main boot drive and then you want the CD DVD drive uh, after that and the hard drive uh, which is the original existing hard drive uh, last um, now that drive still has my OS on it um, all my uh, games, my saved games, all my files, my documents, so that's still there, everything's still there and if I ever needed to boot off of that um, you know if the other drive would have problems or if I just wanted to start using the hard drive again all I would have to do is come in here to this BIOS menu and simply move the hard drive back up to the top of the list and it would start off the hard drive so uh, once you have the order like this you have the M state at the top um, you're going to want to exit and save the changes um, if you look down at the bottom you'll see uh, F10 is save and exit um, if you want to exit without saving the changes you use escape which is what I'm going to do now because I don't need uh, to save my changes so I'm going to escape uh, escape again exit and here it shows exit discarding changes you want to choose yes because I'm not making any changes um, if you choose F10 to save and exit it'll say would you like to save your changes and you choose yes so I'm going to exit discard my changes and now the computer should boot normally off the drive and that's all there is to it um, once the uh, uh, once your computer boots up um, it's going to try and boot off of the solid state drive you don't have anything on that yet um, so the first thing it's going to do is um, go start the, the CD, uh, CD drive for with Windows and you're going to go right into the Windows install process um, so at that point you just install Windows get everything set up to your liking and install all of your uh, drivers off of the resource CD or the resource DVD that comes with the computer uh, you put that in there's a, a menu that that comes up and you can just go through and it just shows you every driver that's on the disk and just allows you to just click through and install them all uh, it's pretty simple and uh, once you get everything installed you want to update Windows uh, get Windows up and run it uh, updated you're gonna have to run Windows update quite a few times to get all the latest updates uh, once you do that uh, you should be ready to go you're running off your new drive and um, if you look down here in the start menu if you go to computer you will see uh, local disk C is my solid state drive that is my main boot drive uh, 205 of 238 free um, I haven't obviously used it for very much yet uh, I have played some games it is very quick um, boot times are a bit faster uh, but the main thing I notice about the boot times is once the desktop appears you're ready to go everything's already loaded you don't have to wait for Alien FX to load you don't have to wait for all the extra things to actually finish booting up before you can really do anything once you're at the desktop everything runs fast um, I only have a couple of games on here so far load times are very quick um, it seems like a pretty responsive drive works real well for me I uh, haven't had any issues um, so if you are going to go with the Plex store it's been great for me um, uh, whatever you do choose um, you know it, it's 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 a real good setup works out real well and then you will see um, <clears throat> uh, drive E is the uh, the old hard drive oh, sorry about the focus there um, the old hard drive is uh, listed as the E drive now uh, and it does say OS drive because there is an OS you know, operating system installed on it um, and you can you know I can open that and you don't even re I mean it's still best to back things up before you do an upgrade this way uh, just because you never know what's going to happen um, but it's not an absolute requirement because once you do the 
the upgrade and you're running off the new drive, all your old stuff is still there. I mean, you can go right into your, uh, you know, your programs, your user files, all that. You can transfer your save games over any documents you have, whatever. You can transfer them over the new drive, or you can just keep using them off the old drive. Um, you know, if you have documents, videos, pictures, that kind of thing saved, the the uh, the old hard drive works great as a storage drive. Um, so you're ready to go. Um, and that's the that's the gist of it. Again, I'm not an expert, but this is what I did, and it worked for me. Um, so uh, if you do this, uh, good luck, and uh, should work out well for you. All right.